What is the hardest business lesson you've ever learned? So the hardest business lesson that I've ever had to learn, I had to reflect on this before we actually turn on the camera for this, because there's so many different lessons that I've made, a lot of mistakes that I've made. Um, and obviously you want to limit the amount of mistakes. So I'm pretty sure I'm going to make more mistakes also in the future. It's going to happen for sure. It's just a life, right? There's so many variables. But I want to be transparent with you guys, share with you more about my story. Before I actually got into, well, when I got into business, my first two companies, right? The first one that I did was a mobile app development company. The second thing that I did was actually in the construction business. Now, in that process, throughout both businesses, the first business when I did it, we had to get a few clients and whatnot. We were making only a few thousand dollars, which wasn't a lot at the time. And both of those businesses failed because I didn't have the, the skill level. It was the first businesses. I thought I could do everything on my own. Throughout that process, I learned a lot. But essentially what happened was I put a lot of money into those businesses uh, to start the business and to operate the businesses. Even though I was basically a, a one-man person, I had only two or three people that were remote that helped me with certain things on building the apps, on the construction side, how to locate certain data profiles on construction companies or suppliers. So that stuff was very simple, but I did pour thousands of dollars to be able to start the business. I put on credit cards because so, I didn't have the cash flow to do it, and I put it on that stuff on the first business. It failed. And then I had to kind of, it was, it was actually a devastating blow to my confidence and devastating blow for me because I assumed that, hey, I can go into business, it's my first business, everything's going well, let's do this. But it failed because I wasn't able to keep the business running because of the cash flow side. So that's why the business failed. The second business that failed was the same issue. I ran into the exact same thing where we had the same process. We were able to reach out to construction people and we were able to supply them with certain things. But then when you're doing a physical product business, as you know, inventory and the cash flow is extremely tough. You gotta have a high turnaround time, otherwise you're gonna be cash strapped. And so that's why the business wasn't able to feed in with the cash flow and so it failed. Now, as an entrepreneur, if, you, if you've ever failed in a business you, and you've poured money into it, you put months or years of your time, it can be a completely devastating thing that can happen to you. And that's what happened to me. In the first business, if it happens once, the first time, I mean, that's a huge devastating blow. Happens the second time, you gotta really deeply reflect. So throughout that process then, I started deeply reflecting on what happened, what, what, why did I fail at that time in the first two ventures, what was the process that I could do to go forward, what lessons did I learn, and I also had to reflect things with certain mentors that I had at the time that were a lot more successful. I didn't have any mentors in the first business, I didn't have any mentors in the second business, so I had to figure out what was that right process for me to go through. And when I was reflecting on things with mentors, I gained a lot of insights. They share with me so many things that I did not know that I did not know. So that's one of the things that the whole discovery side is one of the biggest reasons why uh, where I'm today is because you had to deeply reflect on the past. Don't, get, don't live there, but for sure that you want to be able to reflect on those things. And the lessons I learned from the industry, if you three of them, there's already people that are extremely successful in the space that you want to do. Connect with them, learn from them, understand how they operate the business. There's only three ways to operate the business, the sales, the marketing, and the operations side. Figure out what you don't know you don't know. Understand the risk. If I had known the risk in certain things of the app business and the construction business, I wouldn't have entered today. But I had to do it through trial and error. That's why I say the second, leads to the second principle. Never do anything to trial and error if you can't help it. Because trial and error is the worst way to do something. It's one of the things that costs the most amount of time, the most amount of money. There's already people that have proven ways to do it. If you gotta spend some money and time, do it. To get that process and use it for yourself. Same thing with this video, why well, I'm sharing this with you so I don't want you to make the same mistake, whether you're starting a business or you're on the journey already. The third thing is to always surround yourself with very successful people that can bounce ideas off of, your advisors or your board of directors. If you're not at that level, mentors that you have have certain ideas or things that you want to have that implement and execute because here's a simple fact, you can't execute everything and as an entrepreneur you have a dozen ideas that you want to implement and quite frankly you and I already know that most of them aren't going to work. You lack the focus to do it. You want to focus on that one core thing that's going to make a big difference and you execute on that over and over again. It's all about the focus of what you want to do. And then when you have certain ideas that you want to do, you want to go off a tangent, bounce that off with entrepreneurs that are already very experienced so you can hear their insights or people that they have heard from, their stories from other people. So you have the leverage of multiple different networks and connections to be able to have a conversation with them. Before I'm recording this video too, I had a conversation with a guy 
very successful. He built a 120, 125, 150 million dollar business in a specific niche. And then I was just saying like he, I added a lot of value from a digital strategy perspective. I was educating him on how to be able to build a business in the, in the digital strategy space and we might work together and whatnot. But the second thing that was valuable for me and I appreciate the conversation was I want, he asked me how he can add value to me and I said, I just want to hear your story. You know, how you went through that process of building that business to that degree. What were the successes and what were the failures? Cause that's extremely valuable. You know, I mean the successes and the failures that someone's had building a, a nine figure business is extremely valuable. That's why you want to have that bouncing board of that, those relationships so you're able to say certain things. And that's why I built a network of people where if I have something I want to execute on, I share it with them and they tell me either if they don't know, they know someone that knows. So that's what you want to have. So those are the three core insights. I wanted to give you guys deeply a lot more value than based off the question that you were asking and just be a little more vulnerable and transparent with where I came from and how I started out. So uh, thanks for watching this video. I want to make sure you comment below. Let me know what insight or value you got from this video. So thanks for watching. Make sure you subscribe to this video and I mean subscribe to the channel. Hit that bell icon so you can get videos just like this sent to you guys. And uh, I look forward to ideally connecting with you one day through LinkedIn or YouTube or whatever platform that you're watching this on. And thanks for watching.